we are looking at the survey results from your um, evaluation of the course during the midterm. I want to use this data to kind of give you an idea of how you can produce some statistics and also how to start drafting an infographic that tells a story of a given set of data. What I want to do first with this data set is create a pivot table that allows me to summarize some of the data into more workable um, numbers. So what I want to create here is a pivot table, which is something that's a bit more advanced for Excel. And what it does is aggregate a set of data into workable numbers. For instance, I can take the question, the pace of the course has been, and see what the results are summarized. The count that it shows me is that six of the students that took the survey said that it was appropriate, five said that it was too fast. Now, in order to visualize this data, I think something like a pie chart would be a good idea. So I'm going to go to the chart option and select this. The grand total is not appropriate for this, so I want to make sure that the chart is not using that as part of the calculations. Um, what I can do is right click on the chart and do select data and then I want it to not include the, all of the values. I want to include appropriate and fast and too fast and I'm just going to say OK for now. So we can see here that the proportion of students who th thought it was appropriate was slightly more than that of those who thought it was too fast. When you're working with a pie chart, using viewing the percentage is usually the easiest idea. Now, when you have something like um, an infographic, you wouldn't necessarily be explaining the source of the data the same way that you would um, when you're presenting it in a paper. So, for instance, I am interested in presenting this in an infographic, and what I will do is create a footnote of where the data is for the overall infographic, not um, create a footnote per chart. I'm looking at an image of the pie chart that I, let's say I like this, um, I might want to change the formatting whereby maybe I want to do the color differently because my infographic is going to have a different theme um, in terms of the colors. But for now, I'll leave it red and blue um, just to simplify things. And I want to copy the area of the chart, and I can do that by right-clicking or using the edit function that allows you to copy. I want to build my infographic in PowerPoint simply because I can just work with one plain slide and add things as I need them. Um, I'm going to, I'm working from a Mac right here, so I'm just going to accept the plain slide, delete some of these pieces. I'm not really interested in that. So what I want to do is paste the chart and I can paste it as an image or I can paste um, paste it as an object from Microsoft. For now I'm going to leave it as um, a drawing object because it'll leave, let me be able to do some modifications because PowerPoint is connected to Excel be, um, being made by the same company. I want to move the chart around and say, okay, I want it to be located in the top corner for now. Um, I want the lettering to be bold. Um, I want to highlight the part that says too fast and italicize this. Um, I'll leave the percentage double clicking inside that font part. I want to increase the size of the percentage so that that's something that stands out. This is again just kind of randomly selecting pieces and thinking what I want it to about how I want it to look. Um, infographics are normally created by um, graphic designers or people that have somewhat of a graphic design experience and so obviously you are not expected to be uh, as experienced with design as a graphic designer, but I want you to kind of play with what you think is the most appropriate way to represent data visually. I want you to keep in mind that sometimes because Office programs are connected, 
if you make changes in Excel, those changes may actually um, find themselves in your PowerPoint. So what I did with my PowerPoint, once I decided how I wanted it to look, um, I took this chart and I copied it and I pasted another image of it, delete the original, just, you know, a random force of habit um, that I have with working with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, place it back to where I want it, and I can still make modifications, but I did this because when I changed my chart in the original Excel document, my pie chart in PowerPoint changed, and I just wanted to warn you that that can happen. Um, Right now I want to see another set of data and I'm interested in um, how the students say that they are doing well in the course or not and now we see the question is I think that I'm doing well so far and only a smaller pro proportion of the students think that they're doing better than those who think they're not doing better and I want to include this chart and I'm gonna, going to again copy it and start showing visually a story about how the students are doing in this course and reflecting on the course. So I pasted the chart and I'm going to make it slightly smaller than the one before because what I'm thinking of visualizing here is a shrinking set of pie charts um, set diagonally across the PowerPoint. Now I would format the font again um, but just to save time, I'm going to go back to the Excel. Let me, again, do the copy, the second copying within PowerPoint so that hopefully the chart does not change on me without my knowledge. So I'm going to place it back in a little bit closer to the original chart. And another set of data that I know is the number of students who started the course was 18 then that reduced itself to 16 who dropped out and now um, there's a set of students who have withdrawn from the course and that's something that has to do with individual choice um, but also students ability to be able to keep with the pace of the course so let's say that we have 12 students left origin from the original course um, the number is 18 to 12. So I'm interested in charting these two pieces together. And I want to make a chart of this. I'm going to select these two pieces. I'm just dragging some numbers around. And I want this chart to be coming from here. And now it's telling me it's 1, 2, 2, 60 to 40. So um, this isn't exactly the, what I'm looking for. What I want to see is 18 was the original and 12 is the new number. Um, so what I'm going to do is change the chart type and I'm going to select area. And now I want to appropriately select the series. So I want series 1 to be the 18 and then I want series 2 to be the 12 and I'm going to say OK and test if, to see if this worked. Um, another thing I want to do is to rotate column and that did not work. So what I'm going to do is play around with these um, chart options and select a different chart type. So I'm going to select my data and what I want to see is maybe basically I want to see one thing showing the 18 compared to the 12. Here we can see um, it's labeled automatically 1 and 2 but I'm not going to exactly keep that. I don't need the series legend because what I want to do is just show these two things next to each other. Um, I'm going to work on formatting. I will format the axes and change the labels. Um, no, that's not exactly what I want to do. Um, I want to change the labels on the axes and let me see if it'll let me do that. Okay, I can't do it here right now, so I'm going to say I'm not interested that much in formal labeling. So one thing I know I want to do is have the bot back be 
nothing, so no fill. I want the lines to be no line. I don't need shadow. I don't need any of those other pieces. Um, I don't want to see the axes actually in this because I just want to use the two numbers next to each other. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to find ways to get rid of everything in the background using the editing, get rid of the ticks, anything, access label, there we go. Okay, so I got rid of almost everything for that axis, and now I want to do the same for the horizontal axis. I want to, I don't know, okay. <laughs> It's always a bit messy to be doing formatting, and so I want you to just bear with me, bear with it yourself. We're interested in these grid lines. I want them gone. So format grid lines, and I'm going to have no lines. You see how everything just disappeared? Beautiful. I want to format the data series, and I want to, they have this option that's called a gap, and I want to shrink the gap between the two so they are right up next to each other. As you can see, we have that available there. I'm going to say OK now. I want to change the color um, and maybe start out with, change one of these to red since we have a lot of red and blue going on in the original piece. So if you go to the Home tab, I'm working on a Mac again, PCs are different, but basically you just want to toggle the different parts of your um, tools and options at the top, the menus, sorry. Um, so here I want, I just copied it. I'm going to paste this chart. And I got rid of a lot of the formatting that was part of the chart over in Word. And now I'm going to add some pieces. This should not have gone there. <laughs> now I'm going to add some pieces to this within PowerPoint itself. So I'm going to select um, adding a text box to this and I'm going to make this text actually walk up the side so I'm going to rotate the text counterclockwise and the text is going to go up the side and I'm going to call this Quan students um, let me see student count And I'm going to just open this so that it works the right way and it's within the column. And I'll move it around as I need to. That's just the title I want to use for now. I might want to change it. I'm so used to formatting these kinds of documents that what I would do is simply copy that same text box and paste it and do another one where it's today. Students today. And let me do enter just because it wasn't fitting. And then I want to change it. Students before, 18, students today, 12. Um, and here we just could format this as we need to, move things around, bold, italicize, change the colors of the font. If we wanted to angle this wor these words, we could use the little circles that a lot of the Microsoft um, drawing objects have for you to angle. You can also angle pieces by going into the formatting option and producing different um, formatting from there. Let's say I decided I want to center this, students before, and then students today, and select all. You can do that by doing control all and I want to center it and I could format the lettering in any way that I desire. Um, so these are just some simple formatting of charts that you can do as you're preparing your infographic. In the next part of this, then I will go into how you might want to include your mapping functions, but I just wanted to give you um, kind of a little bit of an orientation on how you want to design this. When you're working with infographics, because it's really a lot about the visual and then kind of having 
some phrases and words um, on the sides and having a lot of labels that are maybe a label for the entire pie chart. Maybe you don't see that you want to include necessarily the 55% and the 45% because you can just look at the chart and see that only a little bit more than half are maybe true. So maybe I want to just label this part here true, this part false. Um, sometimes the less crunching of numbers um, within the images, the better for the visualization in an infographic, but you just want to be very careful about how you choose to visualize and um, how you edit and format. And we will move on next to how to include mapping because you're working with spatial data for this assignment. Okay, thanks.